got one idea that might help you, and I use this with my students. And this is a weird lesson, <laughs> it's just like artificial, but, but it might really help. Um, and it's the idea of a pre-flight checklist. So when you're trying to build a new habit, you know, like a pilot walks around the plane, checks the tires, checks whatever, the engine, you know, and the, yeah. makes sure there's nothing underneath the wheels. So when you're trying to rebuild new habits, um, you have like a mental checklist, and you can even write it down. And so with my students, a lot of times it's slide grip. You know, they come in holding the thing all kinds of crazy ways. So number one on the checklist might be thumb in the corner. Okay? Mm -hmm. And number two on the, the checklist might be um, whatever we're working on on their face, right. like uh, relaxed left arm, you know, mm -hmm. so they don't mash the horn on the, yeah. the chops. And then there might be one more thing like Darth Vader breath, you know, like, you know, what, you know, yeah. whatever gimmick we can come up so that they remember. So they start each entrance correctly. That's the goal. So, um, you know, they do a routine and then they're in wind ensemble or orchestra. And I want them to go through the checklist before every entrance. So, okay, thumb in corner, relax left arm, Darth Vader. And then I know that they're starting correctly. So in your case, it might be, you know, whatever, firm corners, right, or, yeah. you know, whatever yeah. words you've decided to use. Um, start correctly, and then by the end of the page, you might be playing, you know, at the side of your head or something, and that's okay. But the next time you start, checklist, okay. And pretty soon you'll go further and further correctly. And um, I think that's a good way, because we have to make music, you know, we can't mm -hmm. wait for everything to be perfect. Right. Uh, that, that is the hardest thing. So. I don't know. That's, that's, a, that's a great idea. That's a great idea. Because, you know, it sounds like you got a ton of stuff that you're thinking about. Right. But the goal, you know, is yeah. still, hey, let's make some art. <laughs> is there anything specific that you would like, what you know, feedback on? Yeah. Uh, and a long range idea, like you were talking yeah. about. Developing range. What, um, what, uh, it's a long, slow process. Yeah. Um, I know that. Um, there are some things that I, um, I can't remember the, the player's name, but he was in the uh, army band, um, and he had published a thing where you buzz it, you play it on the piano, you buzz it, um, and, it's a, and you, you find the top of your range and then drop down to soul below that. So if the top of your range is B flat, you start on the F below it and you play sol la ti do. And then, um, and you start an octave below where the top of your range is. So if the top of your range is B flat, you start here. Um, after you played it on the piano, and that was for to get to hear it. And then. certain point and I don't and I can't go any farther like maybe a C yeah so um, C um, middle C an octave above middle C right okay. yeah yeah um, and I also found that I was really tense when I did it you know, uh -huh. when I got up because the not having um, well you know just your brain again I was very tight yeah um, and then the other thing is the Remington um, five note, da, 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 yeah. five note, seven note, uh, seven oh. note with the uh, uh, eight note with the seventh partial. That those exercises. Okay. In there. Um, um, can you slur higher than you can tum, hmm, or is it about know. the same? Don't know. I think I can slur higher than I can tum. Slur higher than I tell. Uh, uh, with me, so only speaking personally, um, I've had the same thing, you know, earlier in my playing, yeah. and um, usually that just means there's extra tension when I'm trying to tongue stuff, right. you know, and the air isn't going. But uh, 
you know, recently I've gotten into learning about Reinhardt stuff, the, the Reinhardt pivot system. Oh, really? And um, it's, it's really complicated, but I think that something mechanical um, can affect the way we play range. Like, you know, why can a trumpet player play higher than us? I mean, right. they're, they're not any more special. The mouthpiece is smaller. Right. Um, so something mechanical might need to change when we go higher. And by mechanical, I mean something might move. Right. You know, we need a smaller vibration to play the high notes. Um, and there's, there's a video that I'm going to send you, and it's by David Wilkin, who's one of, um, I guess he studied with Doug Elliott a bit. And uh, he's got a bunch of videos, and one kind of explains the pivot system. And so when I was a student, I thought it meant, yeah. you know, like yeah. pivoting the horn. Like you see some, yeah. some players duck their head and do all that. That's not what it is. Um, from what I, my limited understanding is that your embouchure slides over your teeth up or down depending on which register you're in. Hmm. So your chops kind of move up and down yeah. a little bit. Um, so with you know I don't want to confuse you too much. I'm going to send you this Wilkin link, okay. and uh, I started experimenting with it, and it enabled me to play as a commercial lead player. So I'm getting a lot of work as a salsa player, doing yeah. some recording. Um, you know I have pretty much an octave that I never had before in my high range. Like I, I could barely hit you know high F. Mm -hmm. before, which is one of the reasons I, I gravitated towards yeah. bass. And then I started experimenting with um, some of the Reinhardt ideas, and all of a sudden it was like, whoa, huh. it's like screaming. Yeah. Um, and I, I haven't totally translated it to bass yet, um, but there might be some clues in there for you. Oh, that'd be great. Um, but you know, I mean, messing around with your embouchure, what you do sounds like it works up to around B flat, and then it right. just kind of cuts off. Yeah. So that suggests to me you know, just something doesn't want to vibrate, maybe uh -huh. it's in the wrong position. Yeah. Um, but you know, that's kind of a long-term thing. Right. So, but there are, some, I think, some safe things that you can do to experiment. Um, so one of them is doing rips upwards. So just to kind of see if you can get your chops to vibrate up there. Um, so when, when someone has like a hard ceiling, it feels like, oh, it just yeah. stops working here. Try that. Okay, so it's the. So I'm just going yeah. somewhere out there. I'm um, starting about half, half the scoop. So this yeah. is like, this is the reverse drunken sailor. <laughs> As you go up, whew, think about powering your slide with the air. Because mm -hmm. um, it's a weird exercise yeah. I'm asking you to do, and you don't want your air to just shut down on you. Yeah. So just blow recklessly up there. That doesn't do it. And go for continuous sound in, as opposed to notches. Okay. So you can go maybe a whole step higher out there. Okay. There you go. Yeah. So um, that's something to experiment with. The other thing that might help, can you squeak out a note in the top? By any means necessary. Um, start just start at like, the high point. Yeah, so, go. so there's a high app, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I thought you said you can only play a B flat. Well, but that's the most god awful and feels like the worst <laughs> F in the world. But you just hit a high app. <laughs> so um, how can you turn that into a usable note? That's the question. Yeah, right. So your chops obviously work up there. Um, 
um, first you have to be able to squeak out the note to be able to make it part of your usable range. So um, one other thing that might help, why not start up there and see if you can go down a little bit and get back up there. Uh, have you tried that? No. Um, because we're always I'm trying to go low to high right. and low often tends to be more open. Yeah. Um, sometimes we don't get, you know, um, this could be dangerous right. to say, but you know, sometimes you can get stuck in that, oh, you know, low right, exactly. or mid range, yeah. and things are just maybe too open. So do this. Just and um, um, don't move the slide. Uh, yeah, try that way. So that might be a good exercise for you, yeah. um, you know, because as an orchestral player for many, like that's what I wanted to do, and my whole approach was, you know, a huge sound and everything, yeah. and everything starts at the bottom and goes up and back down, but doing the opposite can be beneficial. Right. Yeah, that's a good um, idea. And actually, there's a Kleinhammer thing. I, I love this book, The Art of Trombone yeah. Playing. Um, Give me a reason to get it off the shelf again. Classic. Uh, so, try a little bit of this guy. So, just uh, each note articulated and no buzzing, everything on the trombone. So, boom, so far has been you know your diagnosis and then your idea about musical things and, and giving you know um, and then the long term and uh, what the other thing I'm taking away is yeah I need to start working on some rep too um, the when I go back over the video so many of the, the pinwheel and everything else are going to be very um, very helpful I usually close by saying, is there one thing that if you had the entire trombone world at your feet and you were on one of these peaks around here and about to speak, what would you suggest? Yeah, you know, I would suggest, and this is something I try and do, um, 
the reason I had any success was from, you know, kind-hearted teachers and people that you sit next to, you know, in a community band or something. Right. You know, yeah. you're, you're the young guy and someone invites you to come and play. And, and they're willing to share their knowledge with you. Um, I generally don't charge for a first lesson. You oh. know, if someone is interested enough that yeah. they want to see what I have to say, um, I kind of see it as, you know, it's an honor and an obligation to kind of pass that on. And I think um, instead of being mercenary, like many people are, you know, yeah. everything is about money. Um, we should take time and enjoy the instrument and try and, you know, grow the community yeah. that way. Yeah. Um, that's important to me. But um, you probably wanted something planned. No, no, I think that's awesome because the, uh, um, first of all, I agree with that um, when I'm teaching. Uh, if a kid comes to me and says, I want to take lessons, I, I tell him, you know, I really can't give you lessons because I don't have time in the schedule, and if you were paying me, I'd have to do a good job. Um, <laughs> but what I'll do is I'll coach you. And what's that? Well, you come to me, you play for me, we talk, we just suggest some things, and then you go away. And when you decide you want to come back again, if it's working, come on back. Yeah. And, and the other thing is, um, you know my wife, Connie, and... When we went on our first trombone tour with the Trombone Choir of America, uh, we were a little worried um, because her, one of her colleagues said, oh my gosh, I hope it's not like the viola tour. Yeah. <laughs> and um, the trombone players, they're very, very friendly, very yeah. friendly, and so, um, and supportive. I have not found anybody who said, you know, go fly a kite. Um, they all agreed, like you have, to help me with this project, and I think it's been Thankful for it. Thank you so much.